Okay, this is uh, video number five in a series of Quartz Composer um, tutorials. I will go to the file menu and hit new blank. Uh, I've never done this before in any of the videos, and you'll notice that it doesn't have the clear patch. And I always want that. You can see already there's like a checkered background here, which is kind of weird. Also, I want this to be 16 by 9 because why not? And I'll just kind of resize things so I can see everything at once. Um, okay. So uh, now I can um, either click patch library or I can just command enter and add my clear patch. There we go. I'm going to show you in this video, since you already know how to use Quartz Composer, the interface, how to add uh, composition, uh, sorry, uh, how to add patches, how to connect them with noodles. Uh, you understand the, um, the coordinate space and how to display images and videos and fonts, uh, text, and uh, also how to play sound. So now we're going to talk a little bit about interactivity. And I kind of have kind of uh, given you a little bit of um, a head start on this where let's say, um, let's say we just use a sprite. Um, and we'll skip loading images for now. You know how to do it. But what I'd like to do is just make a very small sprite. Let's use the parameters pa panel this time. I don't normally do this, so why not? Uh, I'll make it very small and I'll change its color to uh, green. And I haven't shown you this before, but um, I mentioned that there's an interactive mode for rendering. So uh, for rendering mode, so instead of positioning it using numbers like uh, 0.2, oh, that wasn't right, minus 0.2, oh, that wasn't enough, uh, I can just actually move it and you see the numbers actually update. That's pretty handy. And then I can go back to the regular mode. Um, that's my green box. As soon as I rename it, you see it adds a little sprite note underneath so I don't forget what it is. Uh, then I'm going to duplicate Command D. Now I've got two, but this one should be called, let's say, red box. And, uh, and this one, of course, I should make red. And uh, I think its position is not, not, I don't want to be on top of the other one, so there it is. So I'll put that back to the regular rendering mode. So now I've got these two, you know, now that I don't have it in this uh, move mode, interactive mode, I can't move it. Uh, it's kind of tricky when, you know, if you're in this mode and you're trying to do some interactivity, you might get confused. So make sure it's in the regular run mode or your clicks that you're trying to pick up in your composition might be hijacked by this uh, rendering mode. So um, I think what I'm going to do is basically, I'll just show you a couple of things. One is I could, I know that enable is true or false, and that causes it to appear and disappear. Well, a very easy way to um, add some interactivity is maybe with uh, a keyboard patch. I can say anytime someone presses the up arrow, it should enable the green box. And when they press the down arrow, it should enable the red box. So up arrow, down arrow, both arrows. That's a little bit of interactivity. Um, maybe I can also add the mouse. And uh, maybe the, um, the left button activates the red box. The up arrow still uh, works with the green one. Maybe uh, I actually want them both. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if it's going a little too far, but um, let's say I want, I, you actually have to press the left button and hold down the letter T if you want the red one to show up. That's tricky, uh, and the way that we might do that is, first of all, we need to be able to pick up a letter T. I don't see that in the list here, so I'll go into Patch Inspector Settings and add a new uh, letter. So I've got the T. I could do this, but that's just the T. The left button doesn't do anything anymore. So what I really want to say is, uh, if that is true and that is true, then the result should be true over here. And if you're familiar with any kind of programming, uh, my students who are watching this have used processing, so they know this already. This is like an if statement, an expre a Boolean expression. They're doing Boolean math. And uh, is that, no, that's not a thing. Uh, there's a logic patch, and um, you can you actually have all the Boolean operators here. So I can say if uh, the left button is pressed and the letter T is pressed, then this should be true. Left arrow, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the uh, mouse button, the T, both of them works. So that's pretty interesting. So this is this is ways that you can uh, these are ways that you can add some basic interactivity. Now let's look at something that we haven't talked about. This little 
extra input here that only appears on certain consumer patches. So it shows up for uh, billboards and sprites specifically. It doesn't show up here even though this is a consumer patch. The reason why, this is called the interaction uh, port, and the way that we use it is by adding an interaction patch. This is something relatively new in Quartz Composer. What we can do is connect this interaction patch with this particular sprite. And it's weird, the noodle is not really a noodle at all. It's like a rigid uh, connection between the two. And it's meant to show you that there's, this is different. This is, not, this is linking the two of these together. And what this does is any time, for example, I hover over the green box, mouse over will become true over here. If I click on the green box in here, then mouse down will become true. So it's actually, a, it's kind of like an extension of green box. It, it adds these new uh, ports. So um, let's try this. If anytime I mouse over the green box, it should enable the red box. I think this needs to be true to start. So hover over it. There we go. There's some interactivity that's uh, kind of linking the, the two different sprites really in an easy way. Uh, maybe I say anytime the mouse is down, uh, it should... What's the easiest way to do? Well, yeah, I'm trying not to jump, jump ahead too far, but... Um, mm, well, let's, let's try this. If we just add an instruction, you can play around with this on your own. I just wanted to give you the basics and you could start monkeying around with it, but uh, here's instructions. If I add click count to the text, I should be able to see how many times this was clicked on. Uh, oh, that's interesting. So it's actually counting double clicks, triple clicks. That's weird. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how this click count works, but uh, but it is interesting. There's something interesting going on. It seems this seems to reset itself after a while. Anyway. Um, yeah, and also there's multi-touch, so if you have a MacBook that has all of these fancy things like swiping and so on, uh, pinching, you can, you can use those as well. Okay, so I think that's enough about uh, interactivity. There's lots to try here, and uh, you could make something totally interactive very easily. And in fact, a lot of people use Quartz Composer to prototype entire applications. So you could create uh, an interface here. Maybe it's for an iPhone app. Maybe it's for a website or uh, an actual hardware product. You could create the interface here and make uh, items clickable and make things happen in the way that the real product would. Quartz Composer is great at prototyping, uh, prototyping large software projects really quickly, as you can see. That's it.